Thank you for listening to the Golden Hour Drip podcast with me, Logan Lee Miller. Enjoy the show. Welcome back to the Golden Hour Drip podcast. I'm your host, Logan Lee Miller, and today I have tooth gym artist, Maria. Hi, everyone. (laughs) My name is Maria, and I am a tooth gym artist, and I also do teeth whitening. Yes. Here in Kansas City, Shawnee Mission. In Shawnee Mission. So we are in her studio. It is the cutest little studio ever. Yes. It's so homey. It's just all the vibes, all the good vibes. All the vibes, for sure. It is making me craving like a house, like painting and decorating session. It is um, starting to be fall, you know, like summer, it's kind of like the dog days of summer. And I just have this urge to stay inside and to like be so cozy. Everything. Yes. And redecorate. And this like dark green is giving all the fall vibes. And it's so earthy like, so it almost makes you feel like it just brings you to earth. Yes. Very down to earth. And so I got my teeth whitened probably three weeks from now, yes. um, and I got a little tooth gem. It has been one of the funnest little like accessories yes. that I've had in a very very long time. Right. It's just it's a little something, but it's like oh, it just kind of brightens up your smile. So it's always a good thing. You know, I've been wearing a lot of lip gloss lately. Oh yeah. Because I'm like oh, like a little lip gloss, a little tooth gem moment. <laughs> Everybody's here for it. So last time I saw you, you had mm-hmm. multiple tooth gems on your teeth, and now you're right. just having the little red yes. one. Yes. So I went to the dentist and I had them remove them. I was actually thinking I want to do a grill. <gasps> oh but yeah. I don't know. A part of me wants to do it, but I'm like, what will people think? But it's like I don't really care what people think. So About I'm your kind grill? of in between. Yeah. But I don't know. In between it's on just, if you're gonna do the grill or not. Yeah. I love it. I love it. So, would you do a bottom grill or a top grill? I want to do a bottom grill, but my bottom grills, I mean, my bottom teeth are not completely straight. Yeah. And one of them shifted, so I don't think that I would like that when I'm, like, talking to myself and I see myself. Yeah. So, I think that I would want to do the top one, and that's why I'm kind of nervous, because it's like, even if I don't really think it's what I was going for, it's, it's there. And I don't think I, yeah, and I don't think I'm going to remove them if I don't like them, just because I want, like, I want to feel confident in whatever I think I like. (laughs) And it's a, it's a process. So to have your, um, gem put on, can you walk us through the process of doing a tooth gem? Yeah. So you basically look at my tooth gems and you pick out whatever one you want to go with, whatever shape, size and color stone you want to go with and then we put a cheek retractor which is probably the funnest thing for everyone Mm -hmm. they love that look (laughs) oh my gosh so um it's called a teeth retractor yeah a a tooth tooth a a jaw spreader (laughs) is honestly a a cheek retractor cheek retractor yes so it's basically this plastic huge piece that you put in your mouth to help like Spread your cheek. Yeah. From your cheek. And open up your lips and like have like more of a canvas to apply things to or to do teeth whitening on. And it kind of helps keep your lips and everything protected from all the products that we use. And so it's really what you need to have when you're going to get something done. So Yes. It's very, it's very professional. You feel like you're at the dentist. It's the same type of tool. (laughs) They are opening up your mouth um, and then after you get the the mouth really spread apart what's the next step in the tooth gem process so I'll use a dental wipe so it's kind of just like a toothbrush but just like a white form and then I kind of just wipe all your teeth make sure that you don't have any like food or drink products on your teeth anymore and then I'll go ahead and dry it and then I'll etch it and then after I etch it I'll put some bonder on it and then we will go in and then we'll put the glue and then we'll put the gem and then I always check and make sure that it's the right tooth and the right placement and that you like it and then I'll cure it and then after we cure it that is basically all it. Yep so the tooth gem that we put on at first I thought maybe I would want it in the center of my tooth 
and Maria did a perfect job. She put it like a direct smack in the middle of my tooth. And then she asked me, she was like, hey, like, is this what you want? And I was like, you know, that's what I thought I wanted. But actually, I had my tooth gem angled more towards the front. So when I smile, you're able to see it a little bit better, um, especially like in photos and stuff, um, because I felt like my side profile, you'd be able to see the tooth gem a lot, but I wanted to be able to see it like at the front when I smile at myself in the mirror, yeah. you know? I wanted to see a little something, something. But before we put my tooth gem on, we actually whitened my teeth. Mm -hmm. So I've never had my teeth professionally whitened. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what to expect. Maria was so sweet, walked me through the entire mm -hmm. process. Um, but the weirdest part for me, I think, was when you put the gum protector on. Yes. <laughs> so it's called gingival barrier, and that is just a gum protector, like you said. Um, we apply it because the the whitening gels that we use are obviously strong and they can hurt your gums and make them very sensitive and if at any point I would have gotten the gel on your gums it would have made it tingle, it would have made it sore and it would have just made it really uncomfortable mm -hmm. the whole process and that's why I always ask people like do let me know if it feels like it's tingling because that's not normal and it will only get gradually worse. more worse. Yeah. So. I'm glad and I always try to ask and I ask multiple times like are you comfortable, is anything okay? I just want to make sure that you are the most comfortable and that nothing is hurting or Painful. uncomfortable. Yeah. Yes, for sure. So the the gum protector that she put on was it she had to you cured it, right? Yes. Uh -huh. So it was like hard, like you could yeah. tap on it. Um about halfway through the process I um it was after the teeth whitening, before the tooth gem, I believe, you told me to rinse my mouth. Yes. And so I literally went to the bathroom and I was like tapping on it because the gum protector hadn't been removed yet. I was like, oh my gosh, like I didn't realize. And it's this dark, dark blue. I'm like, I literally look like I've been punched in the mouth. Like it was super, super just like dark, dark blue. Yeah. But my teeth looked so white. Um, I've always had like more white teeth or that didn't even make sense but I've had my teeth have always been fairly white but I could tell a total difference like when I got in the car I could not help smiling <laughs> I loved my tooth gym I, love that. I thought it was so much fun um but honestly like tooth gems haven't been that popular like they've a surge like it's right. something new it's trendy how did you get into the tooth gem gang so funny story i always wanted tooth gems i just i was always like i want them and well in reality i've always wanted a grill yeah <laughs> okay okay <laughs> a real like, grill but yeah. i don't know i just i've always wanted one so then after the fact i was like well you know tooth gems was kind of starting to be a thing i kind of like that and I was like, well, I want to learn how to do tooth gems. I haven't heard anyone that does them. I was like, and I'm sure it's like a simple pop, but it's a lot. Like, it, yes. it goes a long ways, and it just, it's like, wow. Oh, okay, yes. that's cute. It's like minimum effort, maximum impact. It's yes. not that, it's not that um, crazy. You know, it's yeah. something that's just um, placed on your mouth. It's, it's fairly chill, you know, and, uh, but it's a lot of fun. Yeah. It is so much fun. Yes. I, on the other hand, uh, I think a couple weeks ago, whenever you came, I did have like a whole, almost like a, um, a tooth gem, but all around my tooth. Oh, so okay. It was like an, an outline. outline. Yeah. Ah! That's what I wanted to say. <laughs> an, an outline. outline. <laughs> so it was an outline of one of my teeth and that one was cool. But it was funny because sometimes I would look at myself in the mirror and all it would, it just looks so silver. I would be like, oh my god, I feel like that one guy from Home Alone where he smiles and it oh, looks so, yes. like a silver tooth. But yes. it was just like, it's just fun. You can do so it many things. You can do so many designs. A lot of people really enjoy the butterfly. I did have yes. the butterfly as well and that one was really fun. The butterfly is super cute. I've seen hearts that go like from the top to the bottom. I think those are super, super yes. cute. I've seen a cross. Like, I feel like after I got a tooth gem, I saw more tooth gems like pop up on like TikTok and stuff. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, oh, that must have hurt, 
heard me talking about right. like the tooth gems yeah. or I stayed a little too long on that TikTok <laughs> video and they're like, oh, the al algorithm <laughs> says, oh, she likes this. Yeah. Like she wants to see more, but it has really, I don't know. It's, I think it's just something fun for summer. Like yeah. it's cute yes. and I'm not taking myself too seriously this summer. <laughs> I'm trying to just like relax and have yes. so much fun. So I thought it was the perfect thing to just add to my summer, add to the fun, add to all yes. the things. Um, and the best part about it is they're semi-permanent. Yeah, so they last anywhere from two to six months. I have had my red one on for eight months. So that Oh my gosh, yeah. eight months. Yeah, so it's just thriving. I know that some people can come back and even after a year they'll probably have them. But it so. just um, totally just depends on, especially your 24 hours after you get it is really important. Mm -hmm. And then after that, I mean, it's important that you don't go like munching on something that's just going to make it pop off. But it does pretty well and I'm so used to it. I, I, what I really love about a good tooth gem is it's so, it's the same concept of putting earrings in your ear or yes. a facial piercing, you know, I see you have your yes. nose pierced, like it's the same thing. It's just like a little bit of pizzazz, it's a yeah. little bit of fun, <laughs> like just like you would wear a necklace or a ring or whatever, like it's just another way to decorate yourself, to yes. express yourself. Um, and an ex it's an extension of your personality, really and right. truly. It almost enhances your smile, like, to your own preference. Like, it's whatever you want. So it's like, you can go as crazy and dramatic as you want, or you can be really subtle with just a single one that's real cute, pop, and just like there. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I will say, um, I was eating, like, a tortilla, like, a little wrap, and <laughs> I got, like, a bit of the tortilla stuck on, like, my tooth gem. I was immediately transported back to fifth grade, um, and I was like, I have braces again. <laughs> I have a um, stuck up there, like stuck okay. up on it. I was like, oh, that's so embarrassing. I'm like trying to like push it off of my tooth gem. I was like, oh my gosh, it's like having a bracket yeah, essentially. It really like is. Um, the first day, I was like, oh, I can really feel this, and then afterwards, I'm like, ah. Oh, this is fine. Like, yeah. I hardly ever notice it right. until, um, like, someone mentions that. I went back home mm -hmm. this past weekend, and I saw a lot of my, like, friends from high school. Um, and, because we were at the fair, my little okay. sister, she got the um, state, or not state fair, she got the county fair. And then next week she goes to compete Ooh. at the Iowa State Fair. So it's very exciting. exciting. But, of course, you see a girl with a crown. And I had to, like, hang out with her and be mm -hmm. her chaperone the entire day. Okay. So then people were easily picking me out. And they're like, oh, Logan, good to see you again. <laughs> I'm like, oh, great. You know, catching up with people from high school. Right. It's so annoying. But no, <laughs> right. I love them. Oh, oh, nice. um, and then they're like, oh, do you have a tooth gem? And I'm like, yes, I do. Okay. Isn't it cute? Like, it was just... It was a moment. It was so fun. But I was like reminded. I was like, yes, I do have a tooth gem. Yes. It's kind of like that story that you told me when I was here <laughs> about your uh, jewels. Yeah. So I went to the pool bar and I was playing pool and it was just me and my friend at the time. And I usually always wear jewelry, but I didn't have any that night because it was a late night and we we're just going to play pool. Like just me and her. Just and hanging out. Just chilling. Yeah. And there was this older guy, and he just like, kind of comes up to our table and was like, Hey, you know, there's another pool spot over here on Tuesdays. They have specials, and it's free. And I was like, Oh, hey, that's cool. And then he walked away, and he was like, I like your drip, or I like your diamonds. And I'm like, what is going on? Like, what is he talking about? Like, I, like, go to look at myself, and I'm like, I don't got nothing on that's got no diamonds. I was concerned. <laughs> You're like, what diamonds is he even talking about? Like, yeah. are you kidding me? <laughs> and then I was like, oh, and then I kind of like just touched it with my tongue or whatever. So I remembered that it was there and I was like, oh, okay, that's not weird anymore. He was talking about that. Matthew's <laughs> gems. Yes. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I was so concerned. I was like, what is he looking at that I'm not seeing? But it was okay. But it was, there was a funny story too. When I went to Mexico, one of my cousins um, was next to me. And then he was like, hey, you have something on your teeth? And he's like, yeah, it's like right here. And I'm like trying to feel for like, do I have anything? And then I feel my tooth gem. I'm like, uh, oh, I can't pick up that. That's a tooth gem. And he was like, 
Oh, I, I thought it was just something on there. And like a red like pepper? Smile. Or what? Yeah. Oh, I, I guess like, it could have been a different color at the time. but No, it was the red one. It was the red and one. I was like, I mean... So then I was like... So I was like, oh, okay, I see what you mean. And I'm like, yeah. I will say, it's made me a little bit self-conscious, too, because it's, it's like this shiny, beautiful thing. Well, then people look at my smile. What yeah. happens if I have a peppercorn in my tooth or a oh, spinach it's leaf? To be and so they're like, oh, like, I love your tooth gem, but you have like that nasty green piece of spinach since like lunch yeah. and it's 7 p.m. at night. And I'm like, oh, you're right. <laughs> Embarrassment. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I like I wish I could like recommend everyone that gets tooth gems to do a tooth whitening mm -hmm. just because I feel like it will make you more confident just in the simple way of like you already are like enhancing your smile why not mm -hmm. enhance it a little bit more so that yeah. when you are smiling you're not like kind of timid or shy because your teeth are so yellow and yeah. that is one thing that when I do apply tooth gems I kind of don't know how to go about it because I feel like maybe some people cannot afford getting a teeth whitening mm -hmm. treatment, but it's just like, sometimes I wish I could be like, hey, you know, maybe I would recommend always getting teeth whitening first. And I do always say, like, I recommend you get a teeth whitening, but if you can't afford it and you don't want it, well, that's totally understandable. Mm -hmm. We'll do whatever you want. But, like, yeah, it kind of goes a long ways because it just makes you as a person feel like, wow, I'm doing this for me and I feel good yeah. about it. And when I look in a mirror it's like kind of just brightens up your smile like it literally makes your smile grow like it's so crazy when you get your teeth whitened it's just self-confidence goes to another level and you're like wow yeah didn't know that that was important yeah teeth are so important it's literally um there's been so many ads on tv where they talk about like the health of your teeth and I'm not a medical profession, right? Like, I just see right. this on TV. Um, and they talk about, like, your gum health and making sure that your teeth are nice. Um, I was listening to, like, an NPR podcast, and they were talking about that your teeth can determine so much in your life. Like, your professional life, yes. you go and you um, try... They, they were talking about a girl who was trying to get a job, and she had tons of experience, and she thought, like... Um, the interview was going really, really good, and then as soon as she started to, like, smile super big, then, like, the interviewer realized that her wow. teeth, like, weren't good, and then he was like, oh, like, and she didn't get the job, and she asked, she was like, hey, like, why didn't I get the job, and it boiled down to, he didn't her think smile. that her, it was her smile, she, he didn't think that she would be professional enough, right. like, and it's such a, like, good oral hygiene or even like whitening your teeth because sometimes like the yellow part is hereditary or right. it's nothing you did you could brush your teeth every single day all your life and they're still a little tinted and right. so having something to boost your confidence and if you get your teeth whitened it's the first people see about you. It right. really is. It's almost like a business card to yourself. Like, your smile is a very big important part of you. And it's like, your personality is also like, just how mm -hmm. people meet you. But like, people want to know what you are without having to talk to you. And I feel like your smile gives a lot of like, either comfort or discomfort to someone. Yeah. Because they're like, they may think like maybe... Oh, wow, that person is really clean and really cares about what she looks like and mm -hmm. how she presents herself. And maybe you don't even know it, but you have yellow teeth, and people are like, "Yeah, I'm so like, I don't know how and you feel about that." Or you, you're a yeah. little bit more timid to want to conversate with someone like that because yeah. you don't know what you're gonna get or what to expect from someone that you may think that doesn't have no hygiene care for themselves. But it's exactly. really, it doesn't boil down to that. I think a lot of it is mm -hmm. just. Cosmetic jeans and yep. like what you eat, maybe what you drink. Like if you drink a lot of coffee, that is that's that's yes, a, coffee. A good enough reason to come and get your teeth clean for it, sure. It was so hard. Maria was like, "All right, you're gonna be on a white diet." I was like, "For life, <laughs> for life." And she's like, "No, just like the first forty eight hours, forty eight, yeah. Yeah. yeah." And I was like, "Oh, okay, no coffee tomorrow. <laughs> That'll be 
fine. I was very sad. <laughs> yeah. Um, but honestly, it was totally worth it. Now, um, you started doing um, professional teeth whitening and tooth gems. Or when did you start with this? Almost like, I want to say like a year and a half ago. But I used to work in a different salon back in Shawnee. Mm -hmm. I mean, in Tonganoxy. So that's kind of like almost like a 45, 30 minute drive. So, and I worked with the salon, so I was not my own person. Mm -hmm. I did booth rent, so I was on my own, but I was a part of a salon, gotcha. like an open salon. But here I have my own suite and I am my own person. I am my own boss. Okay, so you used to have a, a booth, a rented booth, right? Correct. What was like the biggest thing? Because a lot of our um, uh, service girlies, you know, if you're doing hair, if you're doing makeup, if you're doing eyelash extensions are so big right now, um, tooth gems, whatever. Talk a little bit about the experience and why a booth rental was helpful, hurtful, what you liked about that, um, and what you prefer now in comparison. Okay, there's a lot. So I worked, I worked at, I feel like several different places. And the first place I ever worked at when I got out of cosmetology school was a salon. And it was a salon where it was like everyone did the same things and clients were everyone's clients, which is okay. It was not fine. It was just fine. Um, the only reason I left that place was because we were hiring more people to work, but we didn't have enough work for the people that were at the job. So I was like, okay, that's, that's over with. Then I went to my second salon and at that salon I was making more of a percentage than they were taking from me mm -hmm. but it was just like I was making so much money at the time and she had even told me like wow like your skills are just so high like you're making the amount of money that people that have been here for three years can't make and I was like wow okay I said, so it's in me, I got it, you know, it's, it's, no one's doing the work for me, so I know that I can do it. So then when I left there, I went to a job, or I went to the other salon where I did booth rent. What I did like about it was that, it's like, I never had to do any of, like, the upkeep with the salon. So I never had to clean or anything. Yes, we had to do towels and, like, our own kind of individual work, like, for the end of the day. But it was nice that we... We didn't have to like decorate for holidays. We didn't have to like go out and buy waters and go out and buy candles and go out and just do the little things that make your your space like home kind of. Mm -hmm. So that was, I didn't really, I never really thought about it. But now that I have my own place, I'm like, wow, I have to be like really welcoming. The music's gotta be good. Like it's gotta be, you just have to set the vibe and the mood so that people can come and relax because I feel like you often, you often go to different salons and it's like, it's not what you think or it's like, wow, I'm, I'm like all by myself in a corner and you don't even know how to like talk to people and it's just like really weird. But I also liked that I was able to travel but I didn't like that when I went on vacation, it was almost like I had to tell the owner I was going to go on vacation even though I was booth running. Mm -hmm. So it was like kind of weird, like it didn't make sense to me because I went on vacation once and she was like, hey, so did you go on vacation? And I was like, yeah, why, you know, or is everything okay? And she was like, yeah, and she was like, some of your clients were just asking and I was like, oh, like, I know that I didn't have anyone booked, mm -hmm. so I don't know why anyone should be worried. And I was like, and all my clients knew. So it was just kind of weird. I almost felt like I had to check in with someone still. And so that also is why I love being on my own now because it's like I can take vacations, I can go anywhere I want, I can take the day off. If my if I'm sick, if my dog's sick, I can take a personal day and no one is going to be mad at me. I just have to communicate with the person that I am running into these problems with. So maybe like if it's me and my dog, well then hey, I'm sorry, is there any way we can reschedule or can I get you in an earlier day or it's just yes. easier to... Yeah control the situation when it's only me and that person versus me the person and the salon owner that doesn't have anything to do with the service I'm doing or the money that I have to pay for food threat so I do like just being here but it is a lot 
I didn't realize that you had to do social media, that you had to keep yeah. up with social media, like, and that you had to, like, reach out to your clients afterwards and, like, run sales and run promotions and go out and network with people. It's, it's so much more than just being a business owner because, like, at the salon that I first used to be, I didn't get paid very much. And it's kind of like, okay, I guess now it's like, it, I guess it would never equal out to be the same but mm -hmm. it's like a salon owner does have to do a lot more than you think you know they have to provide everything they have to make sure that all the cleaning supplies are there that all the things that you need all your instruments are there and that they are like instruments that are good because if you don't have good instruments you can't put out good work and that's just how it is so that was always just kind of hard yeah to just it's almost so like all that in. you don't understand the salon owner has like some overhead mm -hmm. so you're essentially paying for her overhead right. um, and then when so you went to cosmetology school Correct. did you go to different schooling for your teeth whitening and tooth trimming yes so that was in California and that was a course so that was fun gotcha yeah. so cosmetology school how long did that take you that took me so I did it uh, I think it was like in 2018. Gotcha. So, it was only, I want to say it should have only been a year, but with COVID, I think I went over like a year and like two months. Gotcha. But I was like one of the first ones to graduate my school because I was ready to go. I was like, That's I awesome. want to go. <laughs> so at your first salon, you were doing like hair or... No, so I've never done hair. Okay. I'm not your hair girly, not at all. <laughs> um, I'm your nail girl. Gotcha. I used okay. to love doing nails. Um, I just love the... There's just like... It's just a feel-good thing. Like when you have your nails done, you almost feel like, wow, I'm that girl. Like, yes. wow. And I've never felt like that with hair just because I've never dyed my hair. Mm -hmm. I did dye my hair one time. And honestly, I'm... Not dogging any of the hair girls, don't come at me, but I just feel like for me, I'm the type of person that likes consistency. And I feel like when you dye hair, you just don't know what you're going to get. Yep. It's kind of like testing your look every time. And I'm one of the girls that like, I want to know exactly what order to do it in, and I will do it in that order every time. And so for me, nails were like, okay, you have to do this one time, you have to do this, you have to do this, and like it was always the same. I knew what outcome I was going to get, versus if I ever did hair, I think that that's just this, like too much thinking, and you just, even if you think about it as much as you want to think about it, you don't know until you're out of the bowl or you're done. So I was like, that was always just too much for me. I was like, I could never be a hair girl. Yes, so. it's the chemistry behind yes. it. You, you're bleaching hair, and mm -hmm. your girl might say, I've never box dyed it, and she box dyed it yep. yesterday. Ooh, and she wants to go platinum. Yeah, so <laughs> I can totally see. So you did nails for a little bit um, at the salon. You, um, I also did waxing, and oh. I also did like lash lifts. And Very cool. So I did a little bit of stuff but hair was just never my thing i've always done haircuts yes i do haircuts for men and women but other than that no no uh, not for you nope not, not the, for you not the chair not for me <laughs> okay so the transition from the salon to booth rent uh -huh. and now you are not booth renting essentially what would you call this situation i would call it that i am a salon suite owner a salon suite owner okay <laughs> that's that's what it is hey. so um, you have your own little section yeah and one thing I will say about booth renting it sounds like the situation um, that you were in it kind of to me reminded me of like when you move out and you are away from your family for the first time right. you you have that apartment and like you're an adult with that apartment um, but if you went to college and went into like a sorority or something and had like a house mother or your CA or anything like that, right. then they're like trying to tell you what to do. Yes. And you're like, no, like I'm an adult, you know, but you're like, oh my yeah. gosh, who am I having to answer to right now? So, um, yeah. understandable. So how was that transition and what did it feel like coming into, um, your own little sweet owner situation? I feel like. God always has a perfect timing for everything because I feel like when I got ready to leave my last place, 
I was already kind of ready. I was kind of ready to go, but I also was like, wow, I feel like I could bring such a good service into the community, kind of yeah. like into a city. I feel like we were out in like the boonies, you would say. So there was only so many people and there were older people. So it wasn't my type of clientele that I was trying yeah. to reach. Like older women obviously would never have wanted to choose gym, but I was like, hey, I want to do this and I'm going to do it. Yeah. And I prayed and I prayed. And then like one day I was like, you know what? I think this no longer serves me anything. I don't want to do this. And my sister-in-law actually was like, hey, there's a salon suite with a girl that I do my eyebrows with. And I was like, hmm, I don't know. Let me just go and check it out. I went and by then I think I had already stopped working on my old job for like three days. So mm -hmm. I didn't know what I was going to do. I really didn't know. I didn't have you any idea. Quit. Yeah, I was just like, yeah, this is not for me anymore. And I'm one of those persons that when it doesn't serve me, I just let it go. I just take it for what it was and I'm grateful for whatever situation I was in. But it's something like I don't ever try to hold myself back from what I can do because I know that there's just so much I can do if I allow myself to take this yeah. step. So I just came, checked it out, and I was like, you know what? I'm going to just go for it. Go for and, it. And here I am, and I love it, and I love the girls I work with. And I just love that when I walked into my room, it was almost like a perfect feeling, like, wow. Like, because I had already been working on my own website and stuff, like, I think a month before I had left. Because I knew, I knew that I was only going to want to do T-pointing at this, at wherever I was going to be new. I didn't want to do nails, and the reason I didn't want to do nails was because I'm good at nails, and I felt like everyone was going to be booking me for nails, but never leaving enough opportunity for people to get their teeth pointed. Yeah. So I was like... I kind of have to pick pick my poison almost like I could have kept doing t nails yeah. but I wanted to do something else and I was like I'm not gonna limit myself to do two things if that's not what I want to do I said I want to do what's gonna make me happy I was like and nails was is a happy thing because I still do my own but it's also like it wasn't satisfying the part of me that I wanted it to like mm -hmm. now it's almost more like I do it for fun. The nail but, part. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, I'm glad that I took the chances on myself because it's like, it's got me to where I am and I love what I do now. Yes. Yeah. So when you were booth renting, were you also offering teeth whitening services? Yes. Yeah. And so I wasn't, I never had offered tooth gems because like I said, my clientele was older. And even when I put mine on, they were just like really weirded out about it. They and didn't like, like, them. like, like, what is going on? What's like, wrong in with that? Yeah. yeah. And they're just, they're just so, just so confused. I guess I yeah. don't know. On why you would want yeah. to put? Why would I do that yeah. type of thing? And that, that's why I always feel like, eh, I don't know about getting to gyms because it's like, there's some people that come into my door and they're very professional and very yeah. put together, and mm -hmm. I, I don't want to make them feel uncomfortable because of what I look like or how I feel like I want to present myself. Yeah. So it's kind of hard being a business owner because you want to make everyone feel welcome. And you know, I don't know if I'm going to have an older lady or I'm going to have a younger lady or like, it's just you don't know who you're going to have. You just have to be ready yeah. and professionally just that's ready for it. Yes. Yeah, especially because uh, anybody can get their teeth whitened, but some people don't necessarily want a tooth gem, right? right? Like, at first, I wasn't sure if I wanted a tooth gem, mm -hmm. but then I was like, <laughs> why not? Like, I will never be this young again. Right. I don't have children. Like, who am I trying to impress? My husband? <laughs> like, no. Like, I could care less about him. Like, I want to wear my, my tooth gem. Right. I want to have fun. Um, so I could see how that might be a little intimidating when you feel like you you have a confidence boost when you put it up but it's like right. anything you know um rip jeans it, it feels like oh my gosh I get roasted every right. single time I wear any sort of rim jeans so like oh my gosh like but you bought them like that I'm like yes and like, you spent that much on them yes and I, you grandparents parents <laughs> anybody who is older you guys expressed yourself 
when you were your own age. Yes, and it could have been totally something different, like greased hair or like any any of the other trends, like bangs straight across the face and like aquanet sprayed up in there. Okay, that was how you expressed yourself. We want to express ourselves with a few right. tooth gems, yes. like it's fine. Um, but I could see how that would be kind of like you don't know um, the line of being professional and also like this is your skill this right. is your profession mm -hmm. and you have to showcase that skill as well right. and I feel like that that's why I also want to do it and I feel like even if I don't like it that's why I would keep it even yeah. just for a couple months because I want to showcase what I can do I feel like every time people see me they're like oh my god you have a tooth jam where did you get that and I'm like it's just a great conversation starter especially since I'm the business owner it's like I'm the cover of my business so I have exactly. to show up and be presentable with what I can offer so that people are questioned or like wow I that's something I didn't know that even existed or wow I didn't know that there were people that actually did that in my town or where I live and it's just nice to be able to show up and then just offer something without having to be like hey I got a you know like I got a flyer or something like you just come be presentable. It's always better when you are starting a business or showcasing a skill or your profession. I see it all the time at doctor's offices or some of the more um, like law offices and stuff. They're not being personable. They're using like a stock photo yes. from Google. And I'm like, we know that's fake. Like right. you did not take that. That's not your office. Mm -hmm. um, they literally put in their search engine like um, middle-aged adult coming in with child period and it's the stock photo not right. personable and so for you to have your more personable right it's right. you you are the face of your company you are putting tooth gems on your own teeth yes. it's safe you can showcase it and of course it's such a good conversation starter you're like oh yeah. you like my tooth gem <laughs> like thank you so much yeah but I'm sure with owning a business, there has been, um, like, some of the negatives, too. Like, right now, girl boss and starting your own business and doing all the things and um, maybe not taking um, a college route, which is perfectly fine, um, or, like, doing something different. But sometimes the business, like, starting your own business can be a little glorified and people can be like, oh, I'm going to do this all by myself. It's going to be super, super easy. What is something that you wish you knew before you started um, going off on your own that, I mean, do you regret becoming your own business owner? I would never say I would regret <laughs> any of my life, but especially not yes. being a business owner. I think that it was such a great thing that happened, mm -hmm. but I will tell you, anyone that wants to start a business, it does not... I don't think it ever will take just one person to have a great yeah. successful business and I think that's one thing that I didn't I wasn't comfortable with accepting because I wanted to be in control of everything mm -hmm. and it's like I wanted my own touch and I wanted it to be what I wanted and I was like okay that's not gonna work I can't wear all thousand of these hats that I have to be I can't be the business behind the Instagram, the Facebook, the TikTok, like sometimes, yes, I could, but I love what I do and I want to do what I love. I don't want to take responsibility for all of the things that come with business because you're just not going to be good at everything and that's one thing that I also had to accept, like, I'm not, I'm not good at this and that's okay because for, like, my sister once told me, like, Look at Nike. Nike is not just one person and not only one person runs that place, you know? Like, mm -hmm. there's multiple people and you, if you like the person you work with, you will pay what their price is. Yep. And you will get what you pay for your prices. Like, you just have to wing it sometimes and you, and even if you run into a wall, it is okay. It will be okay. Mm -hmm. You just have to realize that you're running into a wall and be like, okay, either this isn't working for us or this is not working for me or I need more input from someone that knows what they're doing and that's also one thing like I always if you sit in my chair I'm always gonna ask like what do you do where do you come from just because it's like it's such a great way to network and especially because 
people that are coming in are doing something obviously and they're good at what they're doing because they're doing it and it's like you find people to work with or you find people to just work with outside of even work or just like have friendships and it's it's okay to not know everything and you won't ever know anything and everything until you just do it exactly. and I feel like one of the biggest things is just do it messy do it all messy and also a business is never going to come about not even in like a day or two it's it's a process yeah it's not going to come from one day to another and that's what I used to think at first I would be like I'm just going to get my website up and I'm going to be booming. Yeah. Yeah, no. I, I, my website was up and I probably had one or two services booked and I was like, okay, where am I running into a wall? Okay, well, I'm not putting it out there. Okay, I did my social media. Okay, it's I'm, 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 I'm going to be booming right now. And then no, it's like there's so many little things that it's just like take it day by day and work at it every day. Even if it's for 10, 15 minutes, do something. It will pay off, and I feel like it's all about what you want to like. And like when I was like preparing my room and all the decorations and stuff, I would always ask everyone like, "Oh, what do you think about this? What do you think about this? Should I do this? Should I do that?" And my sister was like, "Okay," she's like, "You're driving me nuts. Mm -hmm. Stop asking everyone what they want." She said because if they tell you they like this and you don't like that, you're still gonna go with what you want. And she was like, and it's going to be your own room. Like, make it a place that you love so that when you walk into it, you're like, wow, I want to be here. I want to stay here. I, I love being here. I enjoy being here. And it's, I'm glad that you said that because I was asking for a lot of opinions just because I was like, I don't know what's going to yeah. look good, but what I envisioned and what I did, I, I love it. And it's like, it's... It's so mean, it's so perfect. Exactly for your <laughs> It's all shiny. I love what you said about not knowing everything and sometimes you just have to throw it up, see if it sticks. Mm -hmm. And the fact that you connect with your clients, that is a great way to crowdsource. Mm -hmm. I know that you sometimes people's opinions it can be a little too much. Right. But I love the fact that you um know that you don't know everything. Right. And you talk to your clients <laughs> and you try to network because that is how you build a business. That yes. is how you are um learning new things and able to jump to the next level and right. to get to the next spot. Um because we only know what we know right. um, and even if you read books or Google something online mm -hmm. you're asking another person because someone had to make that content someone right. had to sit down and write that book someone had to put that on YouTube or to write a blog post whatever right. the things and so I think it's really cool that you acknowledge that mm -hmm. and you say hey like there's also gonna become there's gonna come a point where I don't want your opinion right because I know what's going to be good for me and what's going to be good for my business right I feel like a lot of it too was like I I realized that whenever you sometimes go out and look for opinions it's not going to be what you want because mm -hmm. those people don't have any idea of what you're coming where you're coming from or what you're trying to get out it's almost like you have to just talk to people and have a conversation, a regular conversation before you talk about anything business or business-like to kind of get an idea of do they really want to help me or are they just saying that just to like make me feel okay but like they really don't want me to be that successful like mm -hmm. you kind of just like let people talk to you but you don't take anything personal unless it's going to help you and I feel like that's one thing that I've tried to do is like I talk to people and if I hear, if I like what I hear, it's like, okay, I will keep talking to you and I will come around you if, if you're in any way s something or s a, like being sincere and trying to actually help. <laughs> yeah, kind of. And also too, like I will get, I will like be closer to people that are doing something that I feel like I'm not good at. Mm, yeah. So like a trait, like, like. I'm not good at social media, so when a, a girl walked in and she was like, oh my god, I'm a business strategy 
and I'm like, whoa, that's, that's cool, I need you on my team, like, how do we work this out, like, some people love what they do, and so why do you want to do something that you just don't love, like, mm -hmm. and I was telling my business social media manager, I was telling her, like, I love what I do, but social media is just not for me, I wish I could just do what I love, and so that's what we're working on, like, I want to do what I love, you can do what you love, and we can be a great team together, and we can, you know, we can be something, but it's like, give yourself the okay that you're not going to be good at everything, and just do it messy. You won't know until you do it. So, uh, having a social media manager, what has that done for, like, your time spent, and, like, being able to focus on what you're loving? Um, it's done a lot. I feel like I have been doing, I've been able to have more time to schedule and do more pop-ups. Yeah. So I will literally just be like, hey, I'm going to have a pop-up this day, this day. At this time, I'm going to be giving, ra I'm going to be doing a raffle. And she'll be like, okay. She'll just make an ad, put it up, and get some, like, people look in and get people like wow what is that or like what is yeah. this what's going on and so it's kind of nice because I have been able to focus on going out and doing the things I love which is going out and getting ready for pop pop-ups and yeah. just helping people love and fall back in love with their smile if they're not already yeah. which is kind of nice because it's like not everyone can do that and mm -hmm. right now it's something that's not really known of, so it's like, it's cool. I get to go and yeah. push that out. Now, I met Maria at a pop-up. That's how we got yeah. in touch. Yeah. So, <laughs> I can, I know that that is such an awesome, like, business tactic, because right. you're meeting so many girls. So, we met during Sydney Morehouse. She had her, um, Let's Be Friends, KC, and Maria was one of the um, individuals who had, like, a little booth. And she was doing tooth gems there, and then you could, um, you know, book a teeth whitening. Those, so I saw you there. Right. What other pop-ups have you gotten connected with and been able to do? Because that one, how did you even get connected with Sydney, honestly? I think it's so fun to ask people about oh that. Oh my god, yeah. that's crazy that you asked that. Okay, so Sydney is like... I had always wanted to do pop-ups, but I didn't really know where to start. And like yeah. I said, do it even if you don't know. Do it messy. Just yes. do the things you want to do, and you'll be good at them mm -hmm. one day. Um, she actually, I, I believe it was Sydney that reached out to me. They had a Luca. I think they were gonna drop like a spring collection of clothing, and so they're a boutique out in City Market, and so I. They actually asked me to be a vendor, to do two gems, and I was like, yeah, I would love to. So that was my first one ever. So that was that. And then the second one was the one that we, that you attended to. And then I also went to Luca's, Luca has a sister store oh, cool. in yeah. Santa Rosa. And so I did, I didn't do a pop-up there, but I did go and give gift certificates so that they could raffle for their grand opening day. And then I have done Third Fridays oh, out in cool. West Bottoms. I have done First Fridays in City Market. And then I have done the art. I think it's called like... Art, art Yeah, but it's like the Bear Cliff, Bri Briar Cliff okay. River. So there's one on Sundays. And that's, that's cool. the one I do too. That and I also awesome. do Third Fridays. And Strawberry Hill. Oh my gosh. Yeah. First Fridays, second Fridays, third, third Fridays, Fridays, the fourth oh. Saturday of the month. <laughs> but yes. skip the first. Yes. Oh, that's so fun. It's so I'm lot. sure, yes, I'm sure your calendar is booked and yes. you are just trying to like coordinate everything, which is mm -hmm. honestly, that's one of my favorite things to do. I am a schedule girly and I love having things on the schedule. Right. I like to have it to do things. The day that we met and did my tooth whitening and my tooth gem, I actually like. 
I had a psycho bar appointment, which I felt so bad, right. guys. I was a little, I was like, <laughs> it a was little drenched. Not bad. I was and I did not like, smell anything. <laughs> I was like, girl, you are fine. You know, my hair was like in this like slick back line, and uh, I had just gotten done with cycling, and it was like a tough. It was a tough morning, guys. It was tough. I remember and there was no music. <laughs> here. like, what am I doing here? So yes. glad you got through the day. Yes, um, and then afterwards, so we did my teeth whitening we okay. did my tooth gem I dropped off a pair of my leggings to be hemmed at Lululemon yeah. I went took a shower and then went to my massage for the Ooh, day like I yeah, had appointment I after appointment yes. after appointment like I love a productive day like that right. so I can only imagine how you feel going to like an event and then being able to oh I'm gonna have a tooth whitening here or a tooth gym application here yes. um, I'm, but I'm sure it is chaotic at <laughs> yes, times. it does get chaotic but it's good but I feel like I'm in charge of what I love to do mm -hmm. and I have girls that help me so I have the Instagram girl that helps me and then mm -hmm. I also have a girl that helps me either go and look for pop-ups or schedule pop-ups and it's just nice because it's like I get to go yeah. And I'm there, and I do what I love, and then I go home, and then it's all good. That is awesome. So, so like you have a... Tag team it all the way around. That's so <laughs> cool. So you have a team, there's three of you then? Yes, currently. Oh, currently. Yeah. It's just like, I'm about to what, get some more. Yes, we're going to be popping one That's day. That's <laughs> awesome. So what do your future plans look like? Are you wanting to have like... A gym empire or what you do you want to have a full service salon what does that look like what what's your vision for the future um, I know that's a big up, thinking yeah, yeah no um, so I have something uh, some exciting news that I'm gonna be uh, dropping a new um, a new service that's gonna be dropping in, oh my gosh. in August so stay tuned in August I'm super oh my excited gosh. For it. but in a year from now I would love to have like a salon and I'm still kind of in between like do I want suites or do I want an open salon yeah and I feel like the only reason that I question is because I love the being on my own independently and I like that yeah. I get to come in and I get to clean whenever I want and I get to do whatever I want whenever mm -hmm. I want anything in my room is all me and it's all private yeah. um, but I also feel like I would want an open salon just so that people can like there could be groups of people and they can come as a group and they can be together. But then it's just, it's kind of, don't know. So yeah. I would love to have a salon, but I, there's a lot of cool things that I'm trying to work on. Yes. I would love to have, um, some kind of, um, courses. Oh, so yes. Stay tuned. A course? Yes. On I how to, like, apply to the gym yes. or teeth whitening? Yes. I love that. I would oh think I want to do that by the end of November. So oh, stay that's tuned. so cool. It's all in the works. Everything kind of is slowly but getting there. Like yes. I said, just do it even if you don't know. You'll figure yes. it out. I think that is the most important thing because how else are you going to learn if you right. don't try? Mm -hmm. There are so many things that I have done that I'm like, I literally, I feel so self-conscious. Right. I feel so nervous. I... Like, there's been very pivotal moments in my life, and I'm sure you can say the same for yourself, that you have to figure out what you're made of. Yes. And you're like, listen, I'm either going to do this right now, or, this, and this is a tactic I use on myself, <laughs> I say, you're either going to do this right now, whether I'm procrastinating or I'm straight up scared, I'll be like, you're either going to do this right now, or you can never do it again. So when I was first posting my podcast, I'd be like, you have to upload an episode tomorrow. If you do not upload an episode tomorrow, you can never upload a podcast again. Like that's a yeah. tactic that I use. I've only missed one podcast episode and I was wow. deathly sick. Super impressed. And it was like my second Congrats. episode though. <laughs> Um, I'd gotten very sick, like Garrett, my husband, we were just dating at the mm -hmm. time, would not even let me sleep in bed, made me sleep on the couch, he's like, girl, what? I have to go to work, like, <laughs> he's like you better so, go somewhere, go, go yeah. somewhere, <laughs> yeah, so that is the only time that I have ever fully missed a week, 
and but and sometimes you have anxiety you're like oh my gosh should I post this I'm gonna be afraid like I don't have time it's overwhelming and I just say you're either gonna do this or you can never do it again I like that you're either gonna go to your cycle bar or you can never take cycle bar again you can either you know go to a pop-up or never go to a pop-up again I like, love that it's it's so scary sometimes yeah. but I just like it's a great way to really figure out how bad you want it right or like Push yourself to your fullest potential. Yeah. Potential. Because that's what this Golden so Hour hard. Trip is all about. Yes. It's the best hour of the day. Golden yes. Hour. So, like, that. just pushing yourself to be the best. Mm -hmm. And that best can look different day for by everyone. day. Right? Yes. And for everyone. So, like, my best could be totally different than your best. Right. But we're still doing our best. Right. And I think that's important. <laughs> yes. and especially for people who are just starting out. And I really think it's awesome that you want to put out a course because someone else might have been in your shoes right mm -hmm. like when you started and you wanted to try it and nobody yeah. offered it and nobody you took the course in California yeah. for the tooth gym yes. situation so like in California that yeah. is crazy it's miles away miles and so miles let me bring something to you guys <laughs> bring something to you yes and I think that is truly inspiring and I cannot wait to see what you do next and to see how your business grows and how everything grows. Um, maybe you'll have like a bunch of tooth gem and teeth whitening texts and yes. everything. I think mm -hmm. teeth whitening is such like a, a great thing for special events too. Right. So like I can see you, this is my favorite thing about getting together with like-minded people is like uh -huh. the brainstorming and the energy of right. like... Um, oh my gosh, we could do this or we could do that. I can really see you like doing a teeth whitening event before someone's wedding, like oh, yeah. the day before. You know, you have the. Um, I always want to call it like maybe like a bridal party. Oh, like yes. Like I always like mention that to people because I do mm -hmm. get a lot of people that are getting married. Yes. So I'm always like, if you guys ever want, I was like, I do do I do have parties yeah I do yeah. have parties and I do have like I can come to you so mm -hmm. like say if you want to have your girls bachelorette party and you want to have two point eight, I will totally come you yes. know and I'll be a part of it and it's kind of nice because it's like while well, one person is getting it done I can have two people at the chair maybe or even three mm -hmm. while the other ones are kind of just mingling around and just kind of chit-chatting with each other yeah. it's just kind of a nice environment and it's like why would you not want to give them something that they can keep for a while, mm -hmm. you know, when they're investing all this time and money into your wedding, that they almost feel like they don't receive much back. Mm -hmm. But it's like, when people, when you when you do it for the right reasons, you're just like, oh, you know, it's fine. Yes. But then it's like, you want to give back, so why not give something that lasts for the, forever? Mm -hmm. yeah. Exactly. And I can just see, like, even if you have a bigger team, like, mm -hmm. if you have another person doing teeth whitening, mm -hmm. or even if you pair up with a facialist, or, a, mm -hmm. like, okay, we're having, um, get your teeth whitened, and while that is setting, like, the other girls are going to be getting a facial, or, like, right. just the hangout, like, the night before the wedding, I could see like how spa fun. Vibe. Yes, yes, a spa vibe, or even, like, a day trip. I feel like mm -hmm. there's so much, like, pressure put on a bachelorette trip, right. but even, like, something at self -care home. Self-care day. Self-care day. Oh, my gosh, yes. self-care day. Hanging out. I know I was doing a self-care day. I was like, this is all about the self-care. This is all the things. This is all the fun. So yeah. now um, that you said that, that would be a good idea. Like doing like, I know a lot of people like to get tan, spray tans. Yeah, spray, spray tans. tans. And teeth whitening and like yes. all this stuff. That would be so much right fun. Right before the wedding. Yeah. I forgot about spray tans. A lot of yes. people want to be glowy with like white teeth. Get all, yeah. And I feel like when you're tan, your teeth even mm -hmm. pop more. They just yes. like, oh. They're, they're like vibrant. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's like all the things that you do to prepare for a big day. Right. Like prom or mm -hmm. a wedding. That's the right. same thing. Like yeah. I remember in high school, I was like, gotta get a tan. Like we're going to prom. Gotta whiten my teeth. <laughs> I had just like strips, strips at the time. Anything. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't think that, you know, professional whitening. I thought only a dentist could do that. Right. But no, you can have Maria do it. Yeah. Now, Maria, if someone wants to book with you, if someone wants to find you, where can they follow you on social media? Where can they book with you? All the things. Okay, so all my handles on social media are essentially the same. So it's Impressive Low KC. Um, and on my bio, you can also like find my website and schedule there. Um, I do also have my personal website, and that is... 
EmpressOfLocacy.com. I'm also on Google, so look at on me. On Google, yes. Um, and leave a review, and then if you'd like. Awesome. So I will put all of her information down below if you're watching on YouTube and also in the show notes if you are listening to the podcast. Um, can we do a giveaway or a discount? Yes. Oh so gosh. I will have a giveaway uh, for, let's do, I'll give for the first person that listens okay. to it. So you can get a free treatment. And you have to follow. Minute. Yes. You have to follow both of us. So you have to follow all, my, all of my social media pages. So Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, and then how about this? We have a comment on the post on Instagram. Um, we will have Glow, GHD. Comment that, and then we will pick a winner from the comments. Um, and then we'll give them what you said. We'll do one free teeth whitening session for the oh 60 minutes. And then we will, on top of that, we can do a couple giveaways. So we can do one more, which will be a free custom tooth gym set. Oh and then gosh. we can do a third one, which is going to be $100 off of any service. So whether you do tooth gyms or tooth whitening, whatever, it's totally up to you. Uh, that is so generous. Yes. Three of them? Yes. Oh my gosh, girl. And then I'll give her, on top of all of that, um, anyone else that is ever in the future listening, I will give her a code that she can put on her show notes and that will just be open to anyone and it will be live for as long as well let's say three months yes three months so three months from posting um and you want to do ghd yes perfect okay <laughs> maria that was so sweet and so yes. generous thank you please give this girl a follow and check her out book with her she has amazing taste in like this just soothing videos you yes. feel like just honestly getting my teeth done was the most perfect thing it was so it, it was amazing so and it's such a spa vibe it's yes. no dentist vibes at all no, no, no dentist vibes no, at all no, yes no for sure vibes at all. No, it was and as so some good. people are really scared of the dentist I every time I'm there I'm cringing and I'm like why am I here oh my gosh but yeah. it's not a it was perfect vibe. it was so <laughs> so fun well thank you so much for uh, coming on today's podcast and to everyone listening or watching thank you so much and I'll see you in the next one Thank bye. you. Bye.